Episode number 68. Monsieur the Marquis cast his eyes over the submissive faces that drooped before him, as the like of himself had drooped before Monseigneur of the Court, only the difference was that these faces drooped merely to suffer, and not to propitiate, when a grizzled mender of the roads joined the group. Bring me hither that fellow, said the Marquis to the courier. The fellow was brought, cap in hand, and the other fellows closed round to look, and listen, in the manner of the people at the Paris fountain. I passed you on the road. Monseigneur, it is true. I had the honour of being passed on the road. Coming up the hill, and at the top of the hill, both. Monseigneur, it is true. What did you look at, so fixedly? Monseigneur, I looked at the man. He stooped a little, and with his tattered blue cap pointed under the carriage. All his fellows stooped to look under the carriage. What man, pig? And why look there? Pardon, Monseigneur. He swung by the chain of the shoe, the drag. Who? demanded the traveller. Monseigneur, the man. May the devil carry away these idiots. How do you call the man? You know all the men of this part of the country. Who was he? Your clemency, Monseigneur. He was not of this part of the country. Of all the days of my life, I never saw him. Swinging by the chain, to be suffocated. With your gracious permission, that was the wonder of it, Monseigneur. His head hanging over, like this. He turned himself sideways to the carriage, and leaned back, with his face thrown up to the sky, and his head hanging down, then recovered himself, fumbled with his cap, and made a bow. What was he like? Monseigneur, he was whiter than the miller, all covered with dust, white as a spectre, tall as a spectre. The picture produced an immense sensation in the little crowd, but all eyes, without comparing notes with other eyes, looked at Monsieur the Marquis, perhaps, to observe whether he had any spectre on his conscience. Truly, you did well, said the Marquis, felicitously sensible that such vermin were not to ruffle him, to see a thief accompanying my carriage and not open that great mouth of yours. Bah! Put him aside, Monsieur Gable. Monsieur Gable was the postmaster, and some other taxing functionary united. He had come out with great obsequiousness to assist at this examination, and had held the examined by the drapery of his arm in an official manner. Bah! Go aside, said Monsieur Gable. Lay hands on this stranger, if he seeks to lodge in your village tonight, and be sure that his business is honest, Gable. Monseigneur, I am flattered to devote myself to your orders. Did he run away, fellow, where is that accursed, 